All right, this is um, Professor Terhard's experiment in his year 2000 article entitled Virtual Pitch, Professor Terhard gives the following experiment. In the acoustics laboratory, a harmonic complex tone is generated that it only includes such as the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th harmonics of 200 hertz. Such type of sound was, by Schutten in 1940, termed a residue. So there it is. 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th parcels of 200 hertz. Now, while listening to that residue, you can hear the fundamental as a virtual pit. Now, while listening to it, another sound object, namely a 200 hertz sine wave, shall be switched on. So, there it is. The latter is heard as another sound object. That is, it can be distinguished from the residue. Each of the two objects has its own pitch, that is, independently of each other. Yet the two pitches are equal. One hears two different types of pitch, that is, virtual and spectral, at the same time. And it does not even matter that they are equal in height. All right, I wanted to run this experiment specifically because I think very few cl classical composers have used virtual pitch. There's usually a root in there somewhere, but a few composers have, specifically Scriabin, maybe, in the poem of Ecstasy, and the spe specifically Stravinsky in the Rite of Spring, and maybe a few others, like Gershwin in, in Porgy and Bess. Um, and in particular, Webern. The Webern chord is a classic example of a rootless chord in which the root is created by the virtual pitch process. And I particularly think this is important because I think virtual pitch is, in fact, the foundation of modern and avant-garde jazz.